Let's just take a break from the politics, from the hate speech, from... I don't know what this government is up to. And let's talk about, well, an issue that is pretty fundamental to life, and that is the creation of it. The creation of it by becoming a parent, having offspring, having children. And I think it would be fair to say for the vast majority of people, that is something that if you want to do, you can do. It's like falling off a log, isn't it? You let nature take its course, the birds and the bees do their things, and bingo, you've got a little human being. The fact is, though, for many New Zealanders, uh, and I was going to say couples, but that is probably prejudging the lifestyles that people lives, live, for many New Zealanders, it is not like that. But the fact that for me, many New Zealanders, life is not that easy, or procreating, having kids, being a parent isn't that easy, isn't something we have been particularly keen to talk about over the years. And I was therefore very, very interested to read an article in media recently about a guy called Aaron uh, Gascoigne and his wife Jacinta, uh, who have been through the journey of having trouble conceiving, uh, ectopic pre pregnancies and I think several rounds of um, IVF treatment. Um, but also I think uh, Aaron, the dad, now they've got a kid now, she's I think 11, 8 or 11, um, the fact that the problem with their fertility was Aaron's. And boy, if we don't want to talk about fertility, the one thing we really, really don't want to talk about is male uh, infertility. So I want to talk about that this morning. Uh, and as this interview goes on, you might uh, understand a bit more why. But I'm joined now on the line uh, by uh, Aaron Gascoigne. Aaron, welcome to the program. Lovely to have you with us. Mate, Sean, great to be here. You've gone from... Politics to male sperm health. What a Monday morning. <laughs> hey? That's right. Hey, Aaron, firstly, I want to talk about your, your journey. Um, you're yeah. married, you and the wife, Jacinta, and you want to do what mo most married couples do or expect to do, and that's you want to have kids, right? It is part of yeah. life's journey for, for almost everyone. Um, we're kind of program, yeah. programmed to it, aren't we? When did you start um, yeah. trying to have kids, and how did that go? Well, and well, in terms of you know uh, kicking it into gear, trying for Ava was uh, was uh, was back in about two thousand and six, so a wee while ago. Um, now, look, my our story is, has been told a wee bit, and there's it's just an absolute rocky road all the way to the finish. But, um, yeah, no, mate, we had major troubles, eh? We had seven miscarriages, two ectopic pregnancies, both of my wife's tubes removed and four rounds of IVF. Uh, and throw into the middle of that, you know, the cock-ups from local DHBs and a few other bits and pieces. But fundamentally, mate, our last round of IVF when we were coming to it, because, you know, you're chasing that dream of having a child for for years and years and years, and after heartache, after heartache, after heartache, you have to put the spade in the sand and sort of sort of go, you know, enough's enough. And that last round of IVF was going to be our last round of IVF ever. And um, because we just had to move on, we just couldn't continue this roller coaster. I mean, it's, it's relationship breaking, it's marriage breaking, it's all sorts of things. We're bloody lucky we got through the other side of it, but I can only but imagine some other couples would struggle with the whole thing. And that last round of IVF made it was, you know, and all even building up to it, it never was really spoken about my side of the fence. You know, it was uh, it was only ever, oh mate, you're 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 reasonably average for a Kiwi male. Um, and it's not until you start doing a bit of research that you understand that average for a Kiwi male these days is absolutely astronomically bad um, compared to what it was a generation ago. So, um, you know. Fundamentally, trying to, in that last round of IVF that we did, I just bit of, uh, used my brain a wee bit, did a heck of a lot of research over months and months and months and, and <laughs> did the old Kiwi number eight, eight wire uh, uh, scenario and fixed myself and sp fixed my sperm health and in terms of count motility and morphology. Um, uh, yeah, and, and, and us as men, you know, we, we have the ability to do that, uh, Sean. We have the ability to to uh, alter, I suppose, our, our, our underlying quality of our fertility, whereas our beautiful partners essentially are born with theirs, born with their eggs and born with their quality. Mm. So, um, yeah, it was just about a time for, for, for me to stand up, throw the kitchen sink at it, because at the end of the day, this IVF journey and the whole pregnancy journey is really difficult 
And there's a little horrible thing called a dreaded two-week wait in the IVF circle. Oh, yeah. Basically what it is. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, eh? They, they basically well, well, put the I, I want to tell you, Aaron, the, the reason I'm interested in this, I went through this in the mid-90s. Oh, wow. And we Brilliant. went through, I think, five or six cycles. Hmm. And wow. yes, once again, my son is now 23. But yeah, the last oh, time, the last time was the last time. Um, and it was my issue. And I couldn't fix that issue yeah. except through a thing called ICSI, which was at the time, yep. and I think 1999, the absolute gold standard of cutting edge technology in, um, in fertility treatment. So I, I, I laughingly look at my son and I say, I can remember you when you were just eight cells in a micro, in a, you know, a Petri dish. And it's true. Yeah. But yeah. I, 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 okay. I, I was so taken by your thing because I look back at the journey that my then wife and I, we're not uh, married anymore, um, mm. that we travelled and I look on it probably as one of the most difficult life experiences I have ever had and it was something that fundamentally, culturally or whatever, I could not share and I feel like I've carried it my whole life. Oh, that's a shame, mate. It's a shame because the way I feel about it, I, and I get on my soapbox and bang the fist on the table and share as much as I can just to make other people understand that you know, there's other people going through it. But fundamentally, Sean, if you look back, if you look back on all the pain and all the, excuse my language, bullshit that you had to go through to get your son, do you remember, do you fundamentally remember all of that pain? Because I'm, I'm I'll tell you the one here. thing I do, do remember, which I don't think people understand when you say... Oh, like it didn't take, like we've had another round of fertility treatment and it didn't work. Um, yeah. It's not just a medical procedure that did not have the desired outcome. It is, in fact, mm -hmm. you go through an entire grieving process. It you is do, like yeah, you, you have do. lost the hope of having a child. You have, in some ways, lost a child in your mind. And I think mm -hmm. that's incredibly tough on couples. I might also say, mm -hmm. while there was counselling offered or everything, uh, I certainly didn't feel, and I cannot speak for my ex-wife, I didn't feel that the counsellors had any real idea about the impact that infertility has on, on, on individuals or couples. No, no, you're, you're 100% right there, mate. They absolutely don't. And each, each couple individually has a different story and a different backstory as well as how, to they, how they got there. So bloody difficult to understand anybody's situation in that spot. Uh, <clears throat> But I guess, and, and segue into sort of what we're sort of talking about today, you, you know, couples, wonderful, wonderful story. But as you know, and tell me if I'm wrong here, you would have gone down the IVF, uh, IVF path and 95% of everything, of research, of testing, of everything absolute was, was done on your ex-partner, correct? Yep. Well, yeah, no, yeah. we identified my issue very early on. Oh, to be right. honest, okay. we, we identified for various other reasons. Uh, I came up, but even as I remember, the delivery of that news to me was rather brutal mm. um, by the female yeah, doctor I had at the time. And I think it was a doctor's assistant who gave me a ring with the test results. And I think the line, actually, I'll tell you what the line was. Oh, look, the doctor just wanted to let you know it's highly unlikely you'll ever naturally have children. And then uh, the phone went dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks for that. You just told me my titanium and case Superman testicles are, are not so. Anymore. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so, so Aaron, what do you th mm. look? There isn't a. You can't make the world a perfect place. Uh, though I look at no. my son now at the age of twenty three, and I think, geez, it's not bad, you know, um, mm. <laughs> as you would yeah. with your daughter. How yeah. can we collectively do more, and how can the individuals in this situation? be empowered to do more than themselves, and I would say to minimise the real pain and harm that people go through in this process. All right, so certainly for men out there or guys out there, get off your ass and do a bit of research. You yep. know, just understand what makes you tick as a man. Um, fundamentally, we our, our little swimmers are only as healthy as we are. That's, mm. that's, you know, that, that's an easy uh, assumption to make. I mean, let's put it into context, mate. My father in the 70s, um, not that he went through the IVF thing, he was, a, he was a farmer from the Waikato, so he had five sons. He was pretty fertile. Um, 
uh, had he gone into lab tests and done himself as a, 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 a bits and pieces into a jar, on average, by the WHO back then, it would have said um, 120 million uh, sperm per milliliter um, is considered average, right? And that's a generation above us. Today, the WHO have come out and said 15 million across Western countries is considered average, right? Had my father back in those days produced a sample of 15 million, he would have been considered infertile. Okay, so what's happening? Yeah, so what's happening, Sean, is basically us men, we go into a process, oh, we can't, we've we've tried 12 months, haven't been able to have a baby. We go into our GP, he says, off you go, go down to lab test and do your business and do a little tube. And then basically it comes back to the GP and the GP looks at the thing and goes, oh, yep, yeah, you're at 17 million per mil. Tell you what there, Brian, you're, um, you're not too bad. You're in the average category. Jeez, Brian course, goes yeah. away and goes, yeah, he's stuffed, mate. He goes away and goes, oh, sure, I'm in the average category. C's get degrees. That was me at school. Um, what Brian doesn't understand is that he's pigeonholed into what the WHO have, have stipulated as, a, as the average category across Western countries. If Brian did a little bit of research, he would have understood that's 10% of what it was a generation ago. So <clears throat> how, do you, how do you alter and fix and do what you need to do? Do a lot of research, get on. I mean, uh, I, look, I'm not, <clears throat> I don't hug trees and I don't own an electric vehicle, but, um, you know, fun, we, are, we aren't getting the seleniums we need. We're not getting the nutrients from our diets. Everything's processed at the moment. Um, we're not getting uh, the, the building blocks of sperm health as, as men in Western countries. <clears throat> Excuse me, my brother's a dairy farmer. I'll, I'll, I won't hold that against them, but essentially we get our seleniums from meats and nuts. That's the only way we can get our seleniums, for example. Yeah. Uh, we can't produce it. We can't produce it naturally, so we have to get it from our diets. Um, obviously, fertilizers going on the grass, uh, killing off the selenium in the soil. We all know that. That's not... That's not a conspiracy theory by any means. Cows are eating the grass. We are eating the steaks. We're getting zero selenium. So that's, that's, that's a real big driver of why uh, male fertility rates have plummeted so badly. Um, so simple little things like a supplementation of selenium, zincs, other bits and pieces. What I encourage guys to do is be as proactive as their wives because our partners are very proactive people. When they decide they're going to have a baby, they, they crack into all sorts of things. And, and that's awesome too. But us men, because we make up 50% of the, the equation, we need to be doing exactly the same thing, being as proactive as our partners. Yeah. Um, you know? How did uh, the process um, affect the relationship between you and your partner, you and Jacinta? Oh, we had a really strong, we got a really strong marriage and a strong relationship, but absolute. Can I give you an example, Sean? And this is, yeah, uh, yeah. This is, a, this is the funny side of fertility and IVF, and I laugh about it now because my daughter's in her school uniform sitting there uh, watching telly. Um, so I can have a bit of a giggle about it. But little things. So how did it affect the relationship? Right. You have a massive, like this, is, this was when we were going through the, the whole miscarriage and, and natural thing prior to IVF. You're having a massive balmy in the morning over something insignificant. And little. Never about the frying pan, um, Aaron. <laughs> that's, that's, exactly. And then by two o'clock in the afternoon, you get a phone call saying, you, you better whip, whip home, I'm ovulating. And, and the whole, what, you expect me to mm-hmm, do the business? Um, so in terms of a relationship thing, that's the more funny side of it. That is, you know, you've, you've, you've got to procreate to do it. And we all go through different processes in our relationships that sometimes you go, I really don't want to do that. Um, on the stress management side of things and the relationship as such, we had a really strong marriage and relationship. We knew we were going down a bit of a path and a bit of a battle. Um, so we looked out for one another massively. Um, that's, that's all you can do. Um, but I do, I counsel guys that, that ring me through because as, as you know, I put, I, I put together a, a, a supplement to, to men called Vitamins that, that um, you know, I did what I did, Kiwi number eight wire story, gave it out to mates and they started getting pregnant anyway. Long story short... Well, they, they didn't. Like Their partners this, did, Aaron, unless you're a yeah, member of the Labor yes. government. Yeah. Yes, this is true. And, um, uh, and where was I going with all of that? Um, you've, you've, just got to, um, you've just got to be as proactive as your partners. And under, yeah, the counselling of the guys, understand that, that guys go through a hell of a lot of pain and stress as well. Yeah. Well, I've got to say, I look back and, and I felt somewhat isolated by it. I did not think in the mid-90s, and it's not that long... 
before you had your experience that this is something one could openly openly talk about. Um, they don't now, mate. They still don't now. Yeah. They still don't now. Yeah. You know, men in New Zealand or men in the Western countries, they, we, we don't, they don't want to talk about it. I don't give a shit. I'll talk about it. But, mm. you know, it's, we are Kiwi men. We are, you know, 10 foot tall and bulletproof and how dare... So, Aaron, what's your advice? What can a guy going through the infertility process and particularly when it is his issue, I guess actually it's the couple's issue, but he is the primary problem... Where can he go for help? What is the best advice you would give someone who tomorrow or today is going to get that call from the doctors or find out that they're part of of, of this unfortunately growing trend? No, I, I don't mind, mate, because this is who I am. They can ring me on my 0800 number and I'll have a chinwag with them and have a chat. Let them understand that they're not the only person, you know, within this study paddling this walker, for, you know, or, or that, that it is difficult and there's certain things that, that you could do in a, in, a, in a shameless commercial plug for my product, which is Vitamins, V-I-T-A-M-E-N-Z, which is, you know, is uh, GMP certified and Douglas uh, uh, yeah. Pharmaceuticals help us out there. Um, you know, I, I, uh, we, me and my wife, um, we did what we did so to help one single couple not go through what we through, go through what we went through. And we've helped hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of couples all around, you know, New Zealand and Australia. Mm. Um, but yeah, look, 0800 848 263 is go straight. 848 263. Okay. If there's a yeah, if there's a man out there, a bloke out there that just goes, I'm having a shit time with this whole fertility journey. I need to talk to another bloke. Feel free to give me a call. I've got no problems with that. Good on you, Aaron. Can I just say I admire what you're doing? As I said, as someone who's travelled this journey. Um, it is a tough one and it can be a tough one and it can stay with you your whole life and it is good to know there is a guy out there who is helping other guys through it. Uh, thank you very much Thanks, indeed. Jordan. Thank you very much, mate. Cheers. Aaron Gascoigne. Someone called him Mr Spunk. Someone said Mr Spunk. Well, I don't know. Um, so there you go. If 0800 848 263. If you're a man in particular who is travelling the infertility uh, journey, uh, there is help out there. And could I make just personally this, uh, talk to someone. Talk to someone about it and sometimes it can't be your partner. Sometimes the pain and the existential pain uh, because, uh, you know, to be or not to be, that is the question. What is the purpose of life? I think for many of us, to procreate, to have kids, to leave something behind or make uh, a child's life better than yours was, is a huge thing. And I'll be honest, I wanted to be an Italian dad with about eight kids. That didn't happen. Uh, I've got, I think i got one kid who's worth eight kids and is just a remarkable uh, young man. Um, but it was a hard, hard journey on everyone involved.